Howdy. Ron, um, when I know it's the other side of the ball, but you're a veteran, you're a leader in the locker room. You've been through things like this, I guess, in your career, yeah. coordinator, changing. What can you do to kind of maybe help out, talk to guys like, with the feeling of locker room is what your role can be? Um, I think when we, when I really look at it from the teams that I've been on, the situations that I've been in, um, I mean, we we damn lucky to have a quarterback like Josh Allen. And, um, you know, all quarterbacks um, struggle, and at some point in their career they struggle or they have hard times, and that always looks the same, whether it's a turnover or a pick or this misplay or a sack here or you know, a, a WTF moment from the quarterback position. But I think the max level for Josh Allen, which he's played at multiple times, is like nothing that I've ever seen before. When he sits back there and he has his target, or he's trying to make something happen and he connects. Like his ceiling is higher than any other quarterback that I've been around. And I've been around some great ones. I played with some great ones. Um, all the struggles and all the hard times throughout all the good quarterbacks that I've been around, it all kind of looks the same. And um, you know, that's a that's a good spot to that's a good spot to be in. And like um, you know, I, I uh, explained to some of the guys earlier, like despite what despite what it looked like, we are still very close, you know, um, throw the ball, um, uh, drop pass, turns into an interception, uh, fumble on the first play of the game, at the very, very end of the play, like, um, we are, we are very, very close, so I don't think it's time to start overcorrecting, you know, obviously, once you start overcorrecting and you start, like, okay, let's change this, let's change, you kind of lose your compass of what we do well and where we're trying to go. And um, it's definitely not time to do that. Um, we lost five games. We, we've won five games. You know, I, I know it's cliche, but we are still in control of all the things that we really want to do. We still play all the big dogs coming up. And, you know, I still believe in this team. I still believe in the defense, offense, special teams. And, you know, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. I wouldn't want to have any other quarterback, you know, quarterback in this team other than Josh Allen. Like, even if I could trade him and get another quarterback around the league, like, I just – believe in Josh Allen and what he can do and his ceiling um, more than any other quarterback that I've ever been around. So There was a significant change in coordinator. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not necessarily how, how, do, you, how do you navigate through that as, as a leader on the team when that's not commonplace around here the last few years? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very unfortunate um, because uh, Dorsey has a family here and, you know, he's investing in his team. Um, you know, and at his, at his base level, I mean, just for me looking at it from the defensive side of the ball, like, it's not, you know, it's not the, uh, it, it wasn't all the offensive coordinators' fault. I just, I can say that. It wasn't fumbling on the first play of the game, which is uncharacteristic uh, for Cook, is, is not Dorsey's fault. A pass, he, the guy caught the pass, dropped the pass, it turns into an interception. Like, that was a great play. That was a, a great decision. It's just, you know, but at the end of the day, this is a business and somebody has, you know, to take, you know, fault for it, whether it be his fault or not. It's just, that's just how it, that's just how it goes. I've, I've been a victim of it. Um, I've been in that situation before. I've had moments like that where it's not necessarily, you know, my fault, but at the end of the day, somebody has to take the blame for it. So that's just part of our, that's just part of our league. Um, and it's just part of the business. It's very unfortunate for, for Dorsey and, you know, all the things that, he, that he's had going for this team. He's committed to this team. He invested in this team. And, um, you know, it's, it's just uh, unfortunate for sure. Vaughn, you mentioned everything's in front of you. You feel like you guys aren't too far off despite the record. But the margin for error is, is pretty small at this point. Yeah. How do you balance that of not getting too drastic in terms of change but knowing the results they have to and they have to immediate? I, I mean, um, I'm just the type of guy um, – if the ship is going down, I'm, I'm still at the I'm still at the, the front saying we we can get this thing together. Like it, everybody could be a abandoned ship. Like what is it a Titanic where the captain was still, you know, in the uh, at the what does they call it the 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 uh, roll? What's the thing called where you spin the thing and it's got like the little knobs on it? And he was still standing there. The wheel. The, ship. the wheel. <laughs> he was still steering the ship, and everybody had abandoned ship, and he was just still standing there like the ship wasn't going down. That's that's me. Um, that's one of my, that's one of my uh, great characteristics of me. I'm super optimistic, and I, 
and you can say that's one of my um one of my downfalls as well is I just cannot see things not going well for me or my team or anything that I'm involved with. And I think that's what has gotten me to this level and I feel like that is what will continue to take me um to the next uh level in my life. Is I just can't see um anything negative happen. I don't like voicing negative things and um I just don't I just don't don't see it. You can address it and do everything you want, but my um viewpoint on my life and the things that I have in my life is just it'll always go well until it's not going well. And I have uh a lot of things that could indicate that. We still have we still have a great team. You know, we we've lost some games. If the Denver Broncos can feel excited about being four and five and feel like they're going to the playoffs and they can feel like they can do special things, I feel like we can do the same things too. We have a lot of things to be grateful for just like they do too. And I know I didn't um you know comment on these things after the game. It's just I um I just really I really didn't have, you know, much to say. I, I really um, you know, at that point in time, it was just, you know, losing to your old team and, you know, it just, for me, it just, I did, really didn't, you know, have, we, we won the game, we kicked the, uh, missed the field goal, but no, we had 12 guys on the field, he comes back, he kicks the field goal, it looks like he's going to miss, miss that one too, but it goes in and it was just, for the first time in my career, I just, I just struggled with, you know, the right thing to say at the right time and. You know, I love the Denver Broncos. Hats off to the Denver Broncos, and I'm and I'm happy for those guys. And you know, I'm happy that they have the momentum and they go and play the rest of their season to the best of their ability. And you know, good things will happen for them. One of the one of the weird things, you know, how to play in my old team, right? Um, you know, obviously it wasn't it wasn't a huge game for me, like I had said before. I left on good terms. Everything was great. One of the weird things for me, um, actually being in my pads, walking out there. And, you know, they have McGlinchey, Russ. These are two guys that I've played against, you know, my whole career. So that was normal. But seeing Cortland Sutton in a different jersey was just so weird for me. It was like, do we shake hands? Do I, do I look upset? Do I give him the mean eyes? Do we hug? It was just like the weirdest situation for me to be in. Like, And, you know, for the coin toss, we shake hands. And then after it was like, do I hug him again? Like, do we shake hands? Like, and it's like, no, nah, I can't. You over there? I'm over here. Let me run to the sideline. That was that was one of the weirdest situations throughout that whole week playing my old team. And another flashback um, in time for me is when I first got to the stadium and uh, flipped the equipment manager standing in the same spot that he always stands in whenever we would play the Buffalo Bills as a Denver Bronco. The same exact spot. You come through the security. You're walking down the, the rails on the side. And Flip was standing in the exact same spot that he always stands in every time that I play for the Denver Broncos. So that was that was like a, a blast from the past, like seeing Flip in the same spot. And the guy, he doesn't age a bit, so it still felt like it was 2017 or 18 or 19 whenever we had those good times and we played the, the Buffalo Bills. So that was the two weirdest moments of that, uh, of that week. Other than that, it was just business as usual. Well, now that you've had time to reflect, what was your perspective not being on the field for the final drive to help your team close it out against your former team? Um, you know, you know, we had that's just the way it that's just the way it played out. Um it was um that was just the, the way it played out. The rotation they just happened to be, you know, G and Greg, which they have they have been playing well that, that whole entire game. So, you know, that's just the way it played out. They were ready to go and like I said before, I don't really have you know, any pride in any of this. Like, if this is Young Von, then it'll be like, okay, like, what's going on? But for me now, um, still, tr still recovering and still trying to, you know, get back. Um, you know, it just, it just is what it is. I, I'm not about to have any pride in that situation. Of course, I want to be out there, and of course, I want to play. But at the same time, I want to win more importantly than anything. So, those guys are more, more than capable of going out there and, and making great plays, which we did. It, you know, it was great play from the both defensive ends. It wasn't like I could have, you know, went in there and, you know, outshine those guys. Those guys played at an amazing level and, you know, they were playing at an amazing level all game. So I don't have any pride in it. I just want to win games. Um, you know, I'm still recovering and trying to, you know, get back to playing the type of football that I, that I can play. And, you know, it's, that's, that's just part of it. What do you think it's going to take for you to 
start playing that level of football again? And, and do you see that? Yeah, I still do. I honestly, I honestly still do. I feel like uh, I'm still making those jumps. Um, you know, last game it was I got a tackle. You know, I got a tackle. I was I had quarterback pressures, and you know it was uh, it was it was it was still progressing. And um, of course, I would want it to be you know a whole lot faster than what it's doing. But you know, I can accept um, you know just any progress at all. You know, being being in a stagnant position and not doing anything and just staying the same, like you know, I would I would be concerned about that. So um, just being able to have any progress is acceptable for me. There's been so much commentary trying to diagnose what the problem may be uh, for you guys. Um, Pat McAfee was talking to Chuck the other day, and he said there's something wrong with that locker room. Is there? Is there anything from your vantage point that's, that's inside the building that's, that's off? Nope. It, there's nothing wrong with the locker room from my, from my eyes, and that's something that I take personal because I am – the locker room manager, essentially, I've always been that in any team that I've ever been on, and that the, the case is still the same here. You know, I, I definitely um, don't feel like we have uh, a problem in the locker room. We got a team full of, you know, great guys in here. We all hang out. Um, we are great at communicating, and we are great at uh, the delivery of of that communication. So, I think uh, you know we're in a good spot. And then, of course, you you want to come up with something like Buffalo Bills. We're supposed to be undefeated right now, so. Of course, it's, you got you got to come up with something, but you now that's just not the case. It's just um, little uh, things that happen, like at the, like fumbling the ball on the first play of the game, which is so uncharacteristic of of James Cook. That's not a locker room issue, you know. Dropping the um, dropping a, uh, a a pass with, from Gabe Davis is so uncharacteristic. That's not a, a locker room type of deal if guys are fighting on the, on the side and you know we're yelling and screaming and the coaches that's you know that is a that is a locker room issue and you know we don't have that and to be honest with you like I always like to be honest with the media even if it was I, I probably wouldn't I probably wouldn't tell you guys I, 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 probably, would, I probably would tell you guys that it's, there's something going on like I would try to fix it before I like tell you guys that but you know, being honest, like, I, I really don't think that there is anything going on in the locker room for sure. What is, what is Ed Oliver to really take a jump up this year? I think it's just, I think it's just him and the growth that he's had as a person on and off the football field. Um, he's still fighting through injury. I don't think many people, you know, know that. He's still fighting through injury and he's still being productive as, as he's been, uh, he's the best version of Ed Oliver that I've, that I've seen, whether I've been on the Buffalo Bills or just watching from afar. Um, and I think he's just, Starting to understand like um, his the way he fits into the defense. He's the point guard of our defense. Everything, if Ed Oliver is balling out, like our defense is having a great day. And you know it's rare that the defense really uh, revolves around one player like that. And that's that's the case with Ed. Whether he gets a sack or not, like he's just so disruptive in the middle of the field, and it, it allows opportunities for everybody else around him. And I think it's just his understanding of the game, his understanding of himself. Um, it's just all coming to a head right now. And you know, he should have had like three of he should have had like three sacks in that game. And I think it it goes unnoticed because you see Russ like running around and you know scrambling, but Ed was the one who caused the, that disruption uh, most part of, most of the time. He was really killing the inside of the offensive line um, in this past game. So. He's been playing great for us, and he's going to continue to play great. And he's fighting through injury. That's the crazy. That's the that's the scary part about it. Like when he gets to playing like he know he can, it, it'll just be another jump for us. And hopefully that'll be right when we need it at the end of the season. Vaughn, how do you guys? You were here watching Josh Jacobs end the press conference, and he is so hard on himself. He takes it very personally. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, sometimes uh, I think about like, uh, you know, what I'm going through and, you know, the challenges that I, that I'm going through trying to like get back to playing the type of football that I, that I, that I play. And, you know, and sometimes it just feels like, dang, like, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to try to find, you know, what it is and is. As hard as like I feel about myself and like getting back there and trying to play the type of ball that I play, you know, it's um, 
it's it's a limit to that because Josh is the franchise player, and I can only imagine. I can't even imagine how he feels, you know, um, because it all starts and ends with the quarterback. So I'm hard on myself, and it's hard for – I wouldn't say it's hard, but it's challenging for me to, like, you know, navigate through those challenges and adversity, and I can only – I can't can't even imagine what what Josh is going through. So my role in helping Josh is to let him know that I have his back, right or wrong. I still I believed in him when everybody was talking about him being the MVP of the league and and this and that. I believe in the, in him then and I believe in him now. My love is unconditional. Whether he throws uh, seven touchdowns in a game or have or he has seven picks, and I would rather him have seven touchdowns. But you know my love for Josh is unconditional. Whether he has success or he doesn't have success, and we need Josh um, to be Josh. And, of course, we need him to continue to develop and continue to evolve. And I think, you know, he's his biggest critic as well. And I think he's he's very aware of that. Um, at the same time, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're if you really, really passionate about something like Josh is about football and taking this organization to a championship level, if you're really, really passionate about that, when you have um, moments like we did as a team, this Sunday and in the in the week before and all five of our losses, like you you really take that you take that on your shoulders. Like you know, I've been the franchise guy. With nothing like being a franchise quarterback. So it is a huge weight that you have that you really can't um, hide. And I don't think you want to be good at at hiding you know that that challenge or or hiding that adversity. He's super passionate about. Um, taking this not only this this uh franchise but this whole city to the next level you know he's 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 the mayor of 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 buffalo and orchard park you know and when we're not um having success and you don't hear that that hey hey that song that we play after we win touchdown after we get touchdowns and the crowd going crazy and if you're if you're not delivering on that like it is a it is a huge you know pressure that you have on your shoulders and you know, my job is to just to really just show them that it's not all one person. And it takes all of us to help out with that one person's job. It's not all Josh. I wouldn't trade Josh for anybody else in the league. Past past or future or whatever, any of the greats that ever played a game, I wouldn't trade Josh for any of those guys. Like his ceiling is something that I've never that I've never when he sits back there all tall and stuff and he has this guy and He's throwing the ball and the trajectory on the ball, and whether it's Diggs or Gabe Davis or Don Kincaid catching it, like there is no better feeling than that. And we just gotta get, we just gotta get back to it. And it's, it's, you know, you, we're five and five, like we're five and five. Like I know the standards are extremely high, but we're we're still good. Um, would love to be better. Um, this this game coming up, this game that we have coming up is essentially a playoff game. You know, for us, we lost to the Jets. You know, the first week of the season. Now we have them at home, and we've been struggling. They, they're coming off a loss. We're coming off a loss. It's essentially a playoff game for, for both of us. So, so it's a really, really tough time for everybody in this facility, and especially for Josh. But I wouldn't trade any of these guys for anybody else for sure. Delivering that message to Josh.